Once you're done cleaning everything up, if it's a blade that needs shot painting, it goes to shot painting. So here's what the blades look like uh, before they're painted. Uh, they're masked because uh, the, the manual requires that only a specific station, uh, like the 8 to the 30 inch station, uh, be painted in this process. So you see that we've got it masked here, and then it goes into our shot bean cabinet. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about the shot bean cabinet before we get going. This is not, uh, you know, you don't run to Walmart and go past the gun section to the shot bean section to pick these guys up. Right, this is a custom uh, custom cabinet built uh, specifically for Air Force shot painting. Uh, that's the only thing it does. Um, but it's uh, a pretty remarkable machine. It's got 14 nozzles. Uh, the whole thing together moves 460 CFM, which is a lot of air. Um, this is a test blade or a qualification blade. And the reason we use it is because every lot of blades that we shoot has to be qualified. Um, you'll see that there's these little, these are almond strips. What an almond strip does is it's a fixed in place and when the shot goes over it, um, when, it when it's peened, that the almond strip will deflect or bend. That amount of deflection is measured in our tester over here and the manual requires that the leading edge have a specific amount of deflection and the trailing edge have a specific amount of deflection. The reason it makes it difficult is, well, the, the leading edge is significantly thicker than the trailing edge, so if all 14 of these nozzles shot at the same intensity, you would either undershoot the leading edge and get the right amount on the trailing edge, or you would get the right amount on the leading edge and you would overshoot the trailing edge. Um, you can't do that. So each one of these nozzles is on a regulator and has a specific pressure that comes out at a certain velocity uh, so as to uh, achieve the proper deflection on the right area of the blade. Uh, we shoot these almond strips before we shoot a lot of blades and then we shoot um, uh, another one at the end of the lot of blades that we do to ensure that the process was uh, qualified the entire time. And here's what a blade would look like after it's finished, after we've removed the masking and after the, the painting has been done. From here, uh, it will go into the Aladine tank just like any other overhauled blade and it'll be painted over. You will definitely be able to see the surface under the paint. Composite technology is also coming up in propellers. Um, it's pretty much the, the wave of the future. Uh, these are some blades off of a 1900D, so they're actually they're composite. Um, they're not uh, your typical aluminum blade. Uh, we overhaul those as well. Um, the process is somewhat similar, but uh, it, it is pretty different. Um, these counterweights are inspected. Um, the, the blade is completely stripped uh, through sanding. Um, any cracks or any uh, delamination is taken care of. Um, with uh, new fiber, new fabric, um, and then it's uh, painted with a static paint, and then um, you know all per the manual requirements. Um, you see these leading edges; if they're damaged, uh, those actually have to be uh, pulled and replaced. These blades are a little more expensive than your typical prop. If a if a prop costs you five or six grand, these blades are twenty eight grand a piece. So you want to be real careful with them. Let's talk hub overhauls. So this here is a uh, four-bladed steel hub for a King Air 100 propeller. Uh, this is what it looks like before you put blades in it. So you'll see it's got brand new cadmium plating and uh, everything's real nice and shiny and new. All of your mounting hardware here for this plate is, uh, these are all factory new parts. Just like blades, hubs have to be overhauled as well. Um, okay, so these are propeller hubs. Uh, hubs have to go through the same overhaul process that blades do. Um, so this is an example of what a hub would look like uh, fresh after disassembly. So you'll see that it still has paint on it, still has the Aladine corrosion protection coating. And um, you'll see the inside. These are actually, this actually is a pretty clean hub. Uh, but from here, it'll have to go to uh, the blast cabinet, just like you saw for the blades. That paint has to be blasted off. From there, it goes through the same chemical line that you saw the blades go through. So this is what one would look like after it's been uh, chemically stripped. And you'll see that uh, most of the corrosion has been worked out of these things. Every, every hub has a traveler like this, right? So it tells you all the steps that have been done to it. Um, from there, um, it goes through the painting process and the aladine process. This is the corrosion protection coating. And uh, 
that it is uh, masked. These are mating surfaces, so they can't have any paint on them at all. So this is what a hub looks like in overhauled condition. You see, this hub was in an impact. You see that hub, that lip has been pushed. That's why this hub's scrap. Yeah, well. That's been pushed too. You can hardly see it, but the trained eye will know what you're looking at. So this was in an impact that blade torqued, right? And pushed in that hub. This is a critical area, which if it's pushed, it can cause cracks. Once the blades are installed and the clamps are installed, uh, it looks like like this. Um, you'll see these clamps are all have they all have fresh CAD, CAD plating on them as well. There's zero corrosion. Um, see all these locking hardware. These are factory new components. We don't reuse those. Um, he also will check all of the angles here with uh, protractors. It's leather. Yeah. So this is the propeller in feather state. And uh, instead of using oil pressure here, we use air pressure. And once we charge it, you'll see the propeller change angles like that. And this is how we set low pitch and high pitch. Reverse. And that's reverse. So this is our parts room. This is where we keep uh, all of our factory new parts. Uh, anytime we overhaul a propeller, um, the manual states that some parts have to be replaced, right? So we call that a mandatory replacement parts kit. Um, we have lists for all those that are produced by the manual. Uh, and this is what a typical parts kit will look like uh, for a single propeller. So we kit everything for our builder. Um, and that way he knows he's not allowed to have any parts left over. <laughs> Let's go talk prop governors. You can't actuate props without prop governors. Okay, so here's what the governors look like off the airplane. Um, they're actually due to be disassembled. Uh, this is the area where he does disassemble them into the several components that go into them. Um, just like propellers, all the internal parts are non-destructively tested. And um, if there's anything that's found that's unairworthy, those have to be replaced. Um, steel parts have to be recad plated. Um, it's also reassembled uh, in this area as well. Once it's all rebuilt, we gotta test it all out. So we've got the test bench over here. Let's go see how he does it. So this is where he sets slow pitch and high pitch. And uh, so if you can imagine, uh, your airframe has a, a blue lever, right? So when you pull that blue lever, uh, this is what actuates it. Nicely packaged and they look like a factory new instrument. Awesome, thanks for the demonstration. Sir. All right, so this is a suspension balancer here. So what happens is we mount the bottom of the propeller. This is like an engine flange. So the propeller is mounted down here and then we suspend it. And then you see, you see this black area here? All right, so the goal is to get the even amount of black all the way around, and that ensures that the propeller is hanging in a balanced position. If it's not balanced, then what we do is we'll affix weights to the hub right here, and that shows you that this has a slight imbalance, so it just takes a little bit, a little bit of weight right there, and we safety it on there, and that ensures a proper static balance. Cool, from here, it goes into the dynamic balance. We static balance every propeller uh, after overhaul, um, or actually any propeller that's been reassembled in our shop, we static balance it. But the most important thing for, for vibration-free uh, operation is to have the propeller actually dynamically balanced. And what that does, it essentially marries the propeller to the engine. Uh, because even though this propeller is you know, perfectly static balanced, when you put it on an engine that has a crankshaft in it that might have a slight out of roundness or you have a six cylinder engine here with uh, pistons that have six different compressions, uh, that inherently has vibration in it and all a balanced propeller 
um, will do to that engine is you'll have an in, a total imbalance. So it's critical that you do a dynamic balance for vibration-free operation. And the way we do that is by uh, attaching an accelerometer here on the forward most crankcase bolt. Uh, this is a calibrated instrument. Um, it's a, just a series of strain gauges. And what this does is when the engine is run at uh, cruise RPM is where I like to do it. Um, so in this engine, it would be probably around 2,500 RPM. We'd run it at, uh, at 2,500 and hold it there. Um, hook it to my equipment and this will tell me how how much vibration you sense and then this photo cell here will look for some reflective tape that I'll put on the back of this blade and this actually will tell me where the out of balance is and uh, based on the readings that I get I will um, affix a series of washers um, I'll drill a hole in the bulkhead here and with a bolt and a lock nut attach some weight um, 180 degrees opposite of where the imbalance is to balance out the entire assembly. So for those of you that are familiar with the prop that's on the Super Guppy, the C-130, and the P-3, the process is very similar. The main difference is that there's already a spot underneath the spinner for the weights to go, and the prop has a pulse generator built into it, so it knows where the number one blade is at all times anyway, so we don't need to put on the photo cell. That's the big difference between these two, but ultimately, the process is the same to achieve the same result. All right, guys. Well, I'm obviously back at home plate, but I hope you enjoyed the video and you got something out of it. It was valuable, you learned something, because now you know all the details that go into overhauling the prop on your aircraft. And what's interesting is the process is similar, regardless of whether you're flying a glass air sportsman, like my buddy Arnie's that I did a video on a few weeks ago, which incidentally, if you haven't seen that, I'll link it up over here, over there, wherever it is, so you can go check that one out. Or if we're talking about one of the four enormous props on the Super Guppy or a P3. Browse the channel, and if you like what you see, please consider subscribing. We've got a really busy month coming up in March with the Super Guppy especially, but I think I'm also going out to Wallops Island to work with the P3 some more, and there's gonna be video on all of it. So stay tuned, there's more coming. We'll see you in the next one.